possible to download. Uh, also in a, a NASA proprietary image format, not a GIF or a JPEG or anything. So using the remote control program, I turned the color down to 4-bit color, the screen resolution really, really low. And even then, this picture was still, you know, judging and coming onto the screen. But what came onto the screen was amazing. It was a culmination of all my efforts. It was a picture of something that definitely wasn't man-made. Um, it was above the Earth's hemisphere. It was kind of looked like a satellite. It was cigar-shaped. It had um, geodesic domes above, below, to the left, to the right, and both ends of. Uh, and although it was a low-resolution picture, it was very close up. Um, this thing was hanging in space. The Earth's hemisphere was visible below it. And um, no rivets, no seams, none of the stuff associated with normal man-made manufacturing. Is it possible this is an artist's impression? Um, I don't know. No, for me it was two coincidences. It was more, more than coincidence. I mean, uh, this woman has said, this is what happens in this building, in this space centre. I went into that building, that space centre, and saw exactly that. And the folders were even called unprocessed and processed or raw and filtered or something, so... Do you have a copy of this? It came down to your machine. Uh, no, it came... The graphical remote viewer works frame by frame. It's a, a Java application. Um, so it's not nothing saved on your hard drive, or at least if it is, only you know, one frame at a time might be. So did you get the one frame? Nope. What happened? Uh, well, once I was cut off, and uh, my picture disappeared. I was you were actually cut off, off at oh, the yeah. time you were downloading the picture? Yeah, I saw the guy's hand move across. Mm. And bear in mind, you're not downloading it, you're viewing it remotely. So in a way, it is downloading because the picture's coming from there to yours, but you're not downloading it as a named file to your hard drive. You're viewing it through an application. I mean, if I was to go and look for pictures that you've described, I'd make blooming sure that I could record everything that happened on my machine. It, yeah. Is there a way to do that? I think there probably was a, a screenshot function in Remotely Anywhere. Uh, which I didn't use. I mean, I'm sitting there bedazzled, you know, thinking, crikey, this really is looking weirder and weirder than it, the more that comes of it. And I also, I thought that I was safe there. I didn't think I'd be caught, you know, three quarters of the way through of looking at the first picture I'd looked at. And also, I was amazed that it was how she said it would be. So, so you were cut off while you were looking at this picture. Mm. A few months later, you were caught. What happened on that day? Um, National High Tech Crime Unit knocks on your door early in the morning. Um, I'd been asleep for about an hour, I think. So I was very groggy. You weren't very night hacking, uh, I was, yes. Um, but fortunately for me, they'd been monitoring me for three months beforehand and saw that I wasn't doing damage, that I was snooping around. Uh, so it was good in a way. Um, yeah, that was March 2002, and uh, they said, oh, you might get six months or so community service. Next thing I know, in November 2002, six months has turned into 60 years in an American jail. Why do they think that sentence is suitable for you? They've written some new cybercrime laws and if when I was following my case and following the changes in legislation and even the minute changes made to the legislation, I'm sure my case heavily affected the new cybercrime laws in America. Um, I think they're peeing their pants, they're incredibly scared that their computer systems are so easy to get into. And so rather than stop the bad practice and increase the security or employ proper IT people instead of training up military personnel, um, they're trying to scare everyone away from not doing it. So I'm a great, I'm the anti-hacking okay. poster boy, you know. That's why you think they're trying to impose such a serious sentence. Why are they saying they're imposing such oh, a they, serious sentence? Oh, they say I've damaged every machine I was on. Is uh, that possible? Well, I mean, yeah, you could have done, but um, it wouldn't have been in my interest. I wanted to maintain a quiet presence. Also, they say that it, for it to be an extraditable offence, it has to be worth a year in prison. For it to be worth a year in prison, it has to be $5,000 worth of damage. And as if by magic, lo and behold, every machine I'm on is $5,000 worth of damage. $5,000 worth of damage to each machine? Yeah. Is that possible? How much were those machines worth, do you think? Well, crikey, I mean, in America, PCs are even cheaper than they are over here. I'm sure they probably cost about um, $500. But these are military so, PCs? Military PCs, but so there's a good chance that they're not standard. And, uh, well, if they weren't standard, they wouldn't have had blank passwords and been running Windows and connected to the internet. You acknowledge that what you did was against the law. It was wrong, don't you? Unauthorized access is against the law and is it is wrong. What do you think is a suitable punishment for someone that did what you did? Um, well, firstly, because of what I was looking for, I think I was morally correct, even though I regret it now. I think um, a free energy technology should be publicly available. Uh, I want to be tried in my own country, 
uh, under the Computing Misuse Act, and I want evidence brought forward, or at least want the Americans to have to provide evidence in order to extradite me, because I know there is no evidence of damage. And that is the main brunt of the charges. That's what's gone from six months community service to 60 years in a foreign jail. Do you understand, maybe, that someone who hacks into such a high level of secure building and such a high level of secure computers, that sounds like a serious offence? You were hacking just after September the 11th, 2001, weren't you? Well, I was hacking <coughs> long before and for a while after and during, as well. So, you know. During the immediate aftermath of 9-11? No, not immediately. It was um, actually... I think that was around... I had actually stopped for a while towards the end of uh, 2000 and um, started again after a few months, so... I can't even remember if I was doing it at the time, but certainly not, you know, during it, because I, I was with everyone else watching it on television, thinking, crikey. Okay. Do you have any tips to stop hackers like yourself from getting into computers within companies or within homes? Yeah, first of all, have a password. Don't have blank passwords. Um, I think your first line of defense is um, stuff that's already part of Windows. Um, so as well as having a good password, in the office environment, you should enforce log on and log off hours so no one can log on before or after office hours. Simple tweak to make in the window security. Um, make sure everyone turns off the machines at night when they go home from the office, or make sure you turn off your router at night if you've got broadband and you go to bed at night. Turn off the remote registry service. Now, let's just talk about that. Can you just talk us through what the remote registry service is and how you turn it off? Okay. Uh, the registry is where lots of information about your computer is stored on the computer. The remote registry service allows a remote user to remotely query your registry. Um, the useful information it contains is um, stuff about your password policy, your usernames, etc., etc. And it's something that you don't need unless you're in a specific situation in an office environment. Uh, Windows XP Home has it turned off by default, but Windows XP Professional doesn't. So Windows XP has basically a button flicked somewhere, a switch flicked somewhere that says allow remote access to my machine and it's switched on, um, that facility switched on. It's switched on by default in Windows XP Professional but not Windows XP Home. Yeah. So you would advise users to go in and switch that off? Yep. And if you search on the internet for remote registry switch off, there's plenty of guides out there I'm sure. Now just also tell me about the, the name of the admin user, I thought that was quite interesting when you told me that on the phone. Yeah, people are... Um, trying to hack a Windows machine, they're after the administrator account, as I was, that's the top dog on the machine, gives you full control of the local machine. Um, one simple technique you can use is just to go into your users and passwords and control panel and rename the administrator, call it, you know, whatever your name is or whatever you like. So hackers won't know what Yeah, so they'll keep trying administrator with lots of different passwords, not knowing the username is wrong, so we'll never get there.